So this show, guys, gives me the exact same feeling as I've had with most shows lately. It starts off and hooks me in for the first three episodes, but then it takes a slow turn down and rejects everything that makes it good. If this show had been about Dan Chase on the run and different agents had been trying to bring him in and he had to escape with the only tricks he knows, it would have been much more entertaining. But instead, as always, after those episodes where he lives off the grid and he needs to go on a run, the story quickly changes style and is now much more about his daughter. Hamsad and a Zoe character who from the second episode and onwards quickly becomes very central to the story and it hinders our main hitman from doing what he is programmed to do. He still had some excellent seats when Zoe was there, but after the very central reveals about Hamsad and Dan himself, Everything was very streamlined and the entertainment value really took a hit. Also, yes, I feel some characters are alright. But that black hitman is someone I don't feel really fit to build as a hitman. And he could have been played by anybody else. Even though the fight scene between him and Dan is kinda cool. You realize after a while that this is a more an emotional show about reveals. And after a while... You learn much more about the complex relationships between the different characters. How Harold Harper manages to make Dan Chase escape. How Dan had a couple of secrets that he kept to himself, as well as his wife also had secrets. The most interesting reveal is provided in the last episode, where it was revealed that the daughter of Hampside actually was the one on the plane as a third passenger, escaping from Afghanistan after Belur's cover as a mole for the Russians had been blown. So of course, we as the viewers had thought all this time that Angela or Emily, as she originally was called, actually was Dan Chase's daughter, when it actually turned out by the ending that she actually was the lost daughter of Hamsad. Anyways, then no wonder Hamsad was pissed. However, it is kind of striking that it took us so long to get that reveal. But of course, then again, maybe it was the point for us as viewers to read between the lines. So basically, yes, you can of course understand that I like the particular intensity of the first and second episode when Harold tried to capture Dan Chase and given him a set of options. You know, like alternative A, B and C. Those scenes were kind of cool. After that, it lost a little of its charm. Because if it had been a cat and mouse chase between Harold and Dan right until the end, things could have been highly interesting. But then maybe you must have had Hamsad thrown out of the mix. The scenes with him are mostly flashbacks, and some of those are actually more entertaining than the present day scenes. I really like seeing how Dan works together with Belur and also with Hamsad in defending Kabul against the Russians. It is of course here you learn about the complexity involving the case when after 30 years Hamsad wants revenge it seems at first. After Dan Chase kidnapped his daughter and raised her as his own. And at times I feel it's a little too complex. Who really tricked who is a question you are still left with. Because while Dan surely loved Belur, she may have tricked him to get her to US because she feared for her life even for her husband. All in all, I feel it's a decent watch, although it was a letdown how it ended after the intense opening. You had a little chase where Dan and Harold had to take out the security team, but they did that fairly easily. Of course, the agent Waters and his hitman friend was also taken out as Emily was kidnapped from them. But we never got to see those scenes. And that's a thing that could have made the last episode better. I also feel, of course, that certain characters like Zoe and that black hitman gets a little too much screen time. I mean, also, in one episode you see him when Harold is talking to him on the phone. And you see the same scene repeated again from his point of view. Which is totally unnecessary. Just pick one of them. He shouldn't either be so central to the story as he is, and the same goes for Zoe. I feel we also should have seen way more seats between Harold and Dan because that could have been really interesting. Because I feel they have a, got a decent chemistry 
but it's not explored enough. After all, I will say I'm slightly disappointed, and I'd have hoped for a show that could retain the intensity and had a little more entertaining action scenes. But it boils down to a light 7 for me after watching this through.